So today we're going to do some quarter scale pattern making using our corset block. So this will teach you some different skills and it will give you some tips as well for when you do your own pattern for your own design. So first we'll look at the different pattern pieces on the corset block and how they relate to the body. So the first piece here is our centre front piece. And this line here is the center front of the garment. So that runs up and down the middle of the body. This line here is the natural waistline, which you can see continues along all four pieces. This point here is the bust point, which refers to roughly where the nipple would be on the body. And then we have a side front piece, a side back piece, and a center back piece. So this part here would be the center of the back. So if you were to look at the examples I showed you in the PowerPoint, we'll go through where they line up. So looking at these examples, this part here is the center front, which is this part here. This part here is the seam in between the center front and the side front here, which has the bus point. Here we have the center front with a zip and our princess line, which is our seam between our center front piece and our side front piece. And again, the same over here. So we have a tie up here and our seam that goes between our center front piece and our side front piece. Now, when we cut our fabric out, this part is placed on the fold, so it opens up to one big piece. And then all of these pieces, you cut a pair. So you end up with a left and a right side front, a left and a right side back, and a left and a right center back. Or if you didn't want a closure in your center back seam, you would cut this one on the fold. So looking at that on a garment, I have an example here. i just move this back. So this is a corset top. Actually, I might just zoom out so you can see it a bit better. So this is a corset style top. This is the front center front panel, the side front panel with the bust point here, the side back and the center back panel. So they've got an exposed zip as their closure in the centre and back. So if you were to look at this folded in half, it may help to understand how the pattern pieces work. So this is it folded in half. So this part here is the centre front. Now this would normally be straight because we've got shape here and it's sewn together, it's slightly curved, it won't sit perfectly flat. So this has been cut on the fold to open up to a complete piece with a left and a right side. And then we have our side front panel, not forgetting our bust point is about here, our side back panel and our center back panel, which also has our closure. You can have your closure in the center front or the center back, it's up to you. Some of you might have a tie in your centre back and that's fine as well. So that's how the pattern pieces work. So if you were to look at this, you kind of get an idea of how it works in relation to a garment. So here we have our centre front piece, our side front piece, our side back piece and our centre back piece here. Now also importantly, we have our grain lines which are important for when you cut your fabric out and we'll go through that later. So we're going to make two designs together using our quarter scale template for our corset block. And you guys will follow and create the steps as I do them. And then you can create your own, have a go at doing your own design. So first up, we're going to do a relatively basic design. We're going to reshape the 
neckline a little bit here and we're going to have a tie at the back here. So first thing I'm going to do is cut these into separate pieces. Now I don't want to cut on the line, I want to cut up the middle, okay, because I want a bit of space to be able to draw in my seam allowance. You'll also notice in between both the front pieces and the back pieces, there is a notch. So here we have a single notch for the bust point and a double notch on the back. And we know it's the back because it has two notches and that's to help line up those seams. And it's also a way to help you recognize what piece is what. So you know if it has a double notch, it's part of the back you know, if it has a single notch, it's part of the front. So the first thing we're going to do is reshape the neckline on the center front. So I want kind of like, almost like a cup kind of shape. So I'm going to draw a curve. At the front. So that's going to be my new neckline. So when I cut it out and open it up, it's going to be shaped like that. Here you can also see how things line up. So when this is sewn together, these two edges would actually sit on top and that line flows nicely. Same with here, these two edges would sit on top and that line there you can see would flow nicely and these two would line up there. The other thing that I'm going to do for this design is I'm going to have it finish at the waist. So I'm just going to draw in that line with my different colour pen just to indicate that that is where my garment is finishing. So if you want your corset to finish at the waist, the line's already there for you so it's super handy. Now the next thing I want to do is work out my tie. So my tie is going to come from the side seam into a triangular shape. So I'm actually not going to end up needing these two pieces because I'm going to create a new piece for my tie. But I'm going to use this shape here as a guide. And I'm also going to use the width as a guide. So to create my tie, I need to consider what type of tie do I want? Do I want to be able to tie a bow in it or just like a double knot? So I'm wanting just like a double knot. So I reckon I only need to make my tie twice as long as the width of the side back piece and the center back piece. So my tie, my knot will end up being about here. But in order to do that, I need to reshape to get my triangular shape for my tie. So we're going to do that by, we're actually going to take this shape and I'm going to lay it on top, lining up my lines here because I'm going to make this quite angular, okay, to get my triangle shape I want. And coming up from the side seam, so remember this is a side seam. I can just see through so I can see that roughly. So I'm just bringing it in a little bit. And then I'm going to put that one on top. And I'm going to keep drawing that line. I'm going to taper it a little bit. So this is where it's going to meet at the center back. But I'm going to start tapering that off because I don't want my tie to be an exact triangle. I want it to be tapered at the end so it's not too thick when you go to tie it. Now I need a little bit more paper here. So I'm actually just going to cut a little bit of this piece and add it on here. So at this point I'm actually going to cut in between 
my side back and centre back pieces. I'm going to just cut on that black line. And then I should be able to stick those two pieces together like that. So getting your tie shape can be a bit of guesswork, but you just need to know how long you want it. So you need to work out what type of tie do you want. Do you want a bow or do you just want a double knot? And you also need to work out what type of finish do you want at the end. Do you want a square finish or do you want a triangular finish like I'm doing? So now I'm going to continue my tie, but I want it to be about the width of this. So I'm going to just measure that. So that is about four and a half centimetres. I'm just going to make a point where four and a half centimetres is, and then I'm going to draw that in. So that is going to be my tie piece. So these two will get sewn together along the princess line and then these will get sewn along the side seam and then we'll have this tie piece. Now what we need to do now is we need to add roughly what looks like now because we're working in a small scale, a centimetre seam allowance around all our pieces except the centre front because this is going to be placed on the fold. So to indicate that it's going to be placed on the fold, we're going to draw in a fold line. Now a fold line is parallel to the edge, which is going to be placed on the fold. So for us, it is the centre front edge. And then you have these lines that then point towards that edge where the fold is going to be. And you can write the words fold there as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add, using my ruler, roughly what is a centimetre around all my pieces. Okay, so I've added what roughly would look like a centimetre seam allowance around all my pattern pieces, except for the front, because I don't need seam allowance at the centre front, because that will be placed on the fold and will be cut out to open up and create one big piece with a left and a right. Now you need the seam allowance to be able to sew the garment together. You need that extra bit of fabric to create the seam to sew it together. The other thing I've done is I've also transferred my notch into the seam allowance as like a little T. So you can see that there. The bus point notch has been transferred here. So now I can cut out my pattern pieces and I can think about how many I need to cut and where they're going to get placed. So there are my pattern pieces. Now just a reminder, you have to make sure all the areas that are going to be sewn together blend nicely. Okay, so you can see that this comes across and then it starts going up and this one blends fairly naturally into a triangular tie up back. Now, when you're thinking about cutting out fabric, what we're gonna do with our corset tops is we're gonna have a full facing. Now, what that means is you will cut out a set of fabric for the outside. So you cut one of these on the fold, a pair of your side front, and a pair of your side back with your tie extension and then you cut it all again and what that's going to do is it's going to create we'll just go back to this top so looking at this top again now this top has a full facing so this has an outer fabric and then on the inside it is faced or lined with another set of all those pattern pieces so you're basically making two. One be becomes the facing on the inside and one is the outer fabric. 
So this is like a really, really good way to create a garment that has a really nice finished edge. So if this didn't have the gathered frill insert, you would have a seamless finish here. So there wouldn't need to be a top stitch or anything. So with our tops, we will be doing a full facing. So what that means when you cut out your pattern pieces, You need to have two of these cut on the fold, one for the outer, one for the inner. Two pairs, so you end up with a left and a right piece outer fabric, left and a right piece inner fabric, and two pairs of this. So when I say two pairs, that's going to end up being four pieces. Now once you've done all your pattern pieces, you're going to get a copy of the cutting layout and you're going to indicate how you're going to place your pattern pieces on here just like you were cutting out your fabric so when you have a roll of fabric you have a finished edge called the selvage and you have two edges with the selvage and they get folded so if this was I'm just going to demonstrate what that might look like with a piece of paper so if this was my fabric, I would have two selvages. So the selvage is the finished edge, and I'm just going to show that with a little zigzag on my little bit of fabric. And when you cut fabric, you always fold it so your selvages meet. Your fabric would be a lot bigger than this though. So here I've shown that with a fold and a selvage. So here you actually have two layers of fabric, okay? With a fold at one end and your finished edge of the roll, which is the selvage there. So when you're cutting out your fabric, you need to make sure you pay attention to your fold lines and your grain lines. So these lines help your fabric to be placed or what I should say is your pattern pieces to be placed on your fabric so they're cut in a way that they sit really well on the body. If you don't follow that, you could find that your garment will hang funny or it just won't look right. So the first thing you would do is you would place your pattern pieces that go on the fold on the fold and then any other piece, you have to make sure this grain line is parallel to the fold or the selvage. And the way you can do that is by measuring. So if you were cutting out your actual fabric, you should measure your fabric. So you measure from the selvage to the top of the grain line. So I've got, here I've got 10.9, and then you'd measure the bottom, 10.9. Now I've got a really good eye because I've done this many times before, so I know what that should look like. So I'm just going to sticky tape that down. I'm just going to put a little bit on the top because I need to write some information on my pattern pieces still. And again, we're going to use, oops, it just fits our grain line on this piece. So I'm going to measure it, so 7.4, 7.4, and sticky tape it down. So this is just an exercise to get you used to working with grain lines and fold lines and working out where they would lay on your fabric. Now I'm going to write the cutting information in, which I want you to do as well. So I've just added in my cutting information on my pattern pieces. I've got cut two on fold, cut two pairs, cut two pairs. So if I was doing this for real, I would pin it all, cut one whole set, and then I'd pin it again and cut another whole set. The other thing you might have um, is interfacing. So you might need to cut a set of interfacing, which is an iron-on medium, which stiffens your fabric. So we can work out on an individual basis if you think you need that for your design. So our next design we're going to work on doing is similar to this one. So it's going to have a shaped 
front at the bottom here. We're going to leave the neckline the same, but we're going to add in a strap. So again, you will need another corset block template and you'll need to also cut this in between each piece leaving room to add in your seam allowance so I've got my pieces here now the first thing I'm going to work on is this shape at the front so I know I want it to come down let's just have a look at that picture again roughly I'm going to use the lower waistline and then at the side seam it's roughly at the waistline so I've got the lower waist and the waistline here so for that shape to achieve that shape it has to meet the center front at a right angle so when it's cut it flows nicely and I don't have a V shape so I'm going to just gently start to curve and I'm going to go about halfway between here and here and then I'm going to put this piece on top you should just be able to see through to continue that line and that shape so it does meet the natural waist at the side seam so you can start curving that back to the side seam And then here, my back is going to have the natural waist as the finishing point. So I'm just going to draw that in. So again, you just need to make sure that these points blend nicely by lining up your seam lines. Okay. You could have this shape a lot more severe if you wanted to. That's up to you. Now I'm going to add in a strap which is going to be part of the garment. Now I don't actually have anything to measure but if you were doing this for your own pattern so it's going to have a strap like this one here. So it's like part of the bodice. It's not separate, this one's separate, these straps are separate. Okay so it's going to be part of the bodice. So what I'm going to need to do, now if you look at this strap it comes out from the side front piece so not the center front piece you can see the princess line there the side front piece so it comes out around here roughly so what I'm going to have to do is stick some paper on here now in relation to the back it's going to come out roughly at the same area so we've got this princess seam here princess seam here and it's going to come out at the side back just before the princess seam so I'm just going to add some paper on top of those bits so here I'm going to reshape the neckline a little bit so I can get that curve happening for my strap so from this point I'm going to just draw a curve then using my ruler, continue that line upwards. Now I'm just going to guess how long to draw it. So I'm going to draw it about, about three centimeters. Now I've got to work out how thick I want it. Make sure it's parallel or it can be a little bit tapered. And then I'm going to reshape this area the arm hole and I'll just square that off so then that will need to continue onto this side back piece so I'm going to line one on top of the other line up my seam line I can just see through the paper and I'm going to continue that Curve and start to bring it up to create the back strap 
So again, I'm going to do about three centimeters. You could, when you, if you were to do this, you would use get an actual measurement. So I'm just making a guesstimate. And again, curve from this little seam line. And you want your straps to be about the same width. So that should be about four millimeters up the top there. And then I can roll that in. Now, also the other thing you should check, I might just fold that in, is that your straps flow nicely from one to the other. Okay, so that looks good to me. Now what I can do is I can add seam allowance around all my pieces. I can add my cutting information and I can put it onto my cutting layout. Now we're going to have a seam here because we're going to have a closure in our center back for this. So what I'll do now is add my seam allowance, transfer my notches, and I'm going to add my cutting information as well. Okay, so I've added my seam allowance, I've added my cutting information, I've transferred my notches into the seam allowance here and here. And that is my pattern piece for that design. So we've got a shaped front with a lower waist at the center front, which then gets shaped to the natural waist. The back is finishing at the natural waist. We have a closure in the center back. We have a fold at the front. And we also have straps which are inclusive of the bodice. So what you need to do now is you need to place this on your cutting layout sheet making sure you adhere to the fold and the grain lines, making sure it's all parallel. And then you will create a pattern with one of your last templates of a design of your choosing. So have a go at doing that, just using the knowledge you obtained today.